Mario, the devil in a black cloak. Street gospel, light of the temple. Saw a swing, kill alive from the ghetto. The hood messenger, let him know hell's close. Black Mario, the devil in a black cloak. Yo, what is up? Welcome to the Street Gospel Podcast. I'm your host, Dave One. And this is episode number... Yo, Cam, what episode is this? Dang, it's been a minute. Episode number 37. No, no, no. 38. Gabby was Gabby Ruiz was episode number 37. Um, and then we did... Uh, this is episode number 38, man. So... Hey man, uh, I know it's been a minute, everybody out there, but uh, you know it was it was we dropped Gabby's podcast. You know, great podcast. If you haven't heard it, make sure you go listen to it. Great story of of overcoming, uh, battling a lot of stuff. Uh, and then it was the holidays, and you know, Christmas and the New Year, and we kind of just figured like we'll take a little break after Christmas. Uh, my boy Cam was down, you know. He got a little, got a little under the weather there, and so we were just like, you know, chill. Everybody was kind of like under the weather, still busy with the new year. We just said, you know, we'll, we'll take a little chill. But I, 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 you know, I had to look for a guest, and I had somebody in mind, and we'll get to to that person in a minute. Before we get to them, I have a couple of uh, announcements. So, first of all, I want to give uh, props to. Uh, this organization it's called Hope and Promises. So they're a humanitarian outreach organization. They give food, medical supplies, and basic essentials to people that are either involved in a, a man-made disaster or a um, you know uh, uh, any other disaster that might have happened. Mother Nature, anything like that. This organization goes out. They give out food. They give out clothing, medical supplies. Um, Really good organization. So I would like everybody to go check out Hope and Promises. They're on Instagram, at Hope and Promises. Uh, they're on the net, www.hopeandpromises.com. Be sure to check them out. Really good organization you can get behind. Uh, making an impact out there. Doing all the small things. They don't want all the limelight or anything like that. They're just doing the things that count, man. So uh, check out Hope and Promises. Uh, secondly, I want to give a shout out to Elevate Ministries. All right. So if you don't know Elevate Ministries, this is a church in Orange, California. Uh, it is my home church. And I'm not just saying this because this is my home church, but this church is about knowing Jesus and making him known. I mean, that's what they're about. They're a family church. Um, they believe in uh, loving God, loving people. Uh, if you're in the area, be sure to come by, check out Elevate Ministries. They have services on Sunday, on Wednesday night. Uh, they have two campuses, one in the Whittier area, and then the main campus is in Orange. Good organization, uh, good for families, uh, good for single people, good for young people, good for kids. I mean, they got a really good thing going there. So uh, Elevate Ministries, you can check them out on Instagram at Elevate Ministries. You can check them out on the web at ElevateMinistries.com. But now we're getting down to the business here, man. We got business. a guest today. We got a guest today. And, you know, I got to... I always play um uh, I always play a little banger for my guests. So I, I, I got a little beat. I got a little beat right here. You know my boy Malachi Dominion makes all the beats. Everybody always asks me where you get those beats from. Uh who made the intro song? Malachi Dominion. But this guy we got here today for episode number 38. He's a video creator. He's a veteran. I mean, the guy's a veteran. I mean, if you look at him, you probably say, nah, this guy ain't no veteran. <laughs> he's a veteran, man. You're right. You're right. He, he, he's a hooper. I wouldn't call him a hype beast, but the dude got some style. Mm. I mean, he got some style. We'll, we'll talk about appreciate his style that. later. <laughs> he got some style, man, but I'm not going to call him a hype beast because he's not a hype beast. He he just puts things together. Let's just yes, say sir. that, right? Like that. Yeah. Uh, he's a brother in the Lord. I mean, the dude represents Christ wherever he goes. Uh, that's a great story. I'm very happy to have this guy here today. And I want everybody out there to give it up for my boy, Zachary Dean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is Hey, praise oh, God, man. man. Praise God, man. I'm here and I'm grateful to be here. Uh, this is my first 
podcast ever. I, I that's what you told me. Yeah. I was like, this yeah. dude's been around a little bit, and uh, I was surprised that this is your first podcast, hey, man. This is the beginning. So I, I mean, that's uh, that's an honor for me to have you on the podcast, <laughs> and this is your first one because I, yep. I I do believe you know we talked. And you said that this was something you wanted to start doing, start telling your story, get your story out there. Um, yeah. I think it's important when people get that kind of feeling inside to say, hey, uh, you know, I, I think something's pushing me to kind of tell my story, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, a lot of people come up to me and they tell me that I have a crazy story and it's easy for us to forget what we've been blessed with. Right. Um it's like I'm so actually so healed from it that I almost forget about my past. And right. moving forward, it's just everything's a blessing, you know? So. Yeah. So where does your story begin now? You grew up in, in, in Oregon, right? Correct, yes. In the, in the rough streets <laughs> of, of Oregon, right? In the cold streets. <laughs> the cold streets. Yeah, I mean. For sure. For sure, right? So I was born in Staten, Oregon, uh, right next to Salem, Oregon, the capital. Okay. But I spent most of my time growing up in uh, Tillamook, Oregon. Shout out to Tillamook Cheese. Till you had it. Say that again. Tillamook. Oh, Tillamook cheese. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Oh, okay. I know. I'm familiar with the cheese. Represent. Right? <laughs> I mean, the great quesadillas right there out of that cheese. <laughs> but uh, there is. A, I didn't know it was a town. Oh yeah, Tillamook's a town. It's actually called a village because it has uh, less than four thousand people. So, and, and you grew up there. And I grew up there. You well, can't kiss nobody. If you your first kiss, everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> and what, 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 what was life there? I. Uh, just small town, small town mentality. Uh, it wasn't bad. Um, you know, I've always been a city guy at heart, I feel like. So, you know, with being a hoop enthusiast or right. being a hooper. So, uh, in that regards, I wasn't a fan. <laughs> but I'll still call, uh, call it my hometown, you know, rep it still. Yeah, I mean, if, wherever you're from is where you're from, right? Man. I mean, that's just that's just the way it is. I almost gave it up, though. Call uh, L.A. I'm just from L.A. Oh, now you're from L.A. Like, uh, the way I dress now, <laughs> everything changed. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm not, I, when I first, okay, so we met, this, you know, it's funny. Everybody always tells me, like, do you know these people that you have on the podcast? Yeah. You, and I said, yeah, to some extent, like, I would say 90% of the people, like, um, that, that have been on the podcast, I have a relationship with them, or we grew up together, or I knew them since I was a kid, whatever it may be, right? Mm -hmm. We met recently um, and through, through your cousin, and we'll get into your who he is and all that, whatever, later. But uh, we met, and then when the first day that you, you walked in, you walked in with your cousin, and we were in the back, and yeah. I seen you, and, I, and you walked in first, I believe, and I looked at you, and I was like... This this dude it got some style here. I mean, that was <laughs> hey, appreciate that Paul brother style kind of. I was like, this guy got like a, a who is this guy right here? It's not Oregon swag. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, you got some style, right? You kind of just laughed it off, but I was like, he's cool. So um, then we got to know each other a little bit and and began to follow each other. And I and I and I got your story, and uh, I just thought it was a, a significant story. And and I think every story is significant, but I thought it was a special story that needed to be told. And then you told me. You know, God's been putting on my heart to, to, to tell my story, and I, yeah. I, I thought that was pretty cool, man. Yeah. So, growing up in Oregon, little cheese town. Little cheese town. And you start, like, you got the, 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 the American Dream family, or what, what is that like? Nah, so actually, the quite opposite. I mean, you know, there's a little bit of toxicness in all families, but sure. my family... Had a special kind of toxic. Oh, <laughs> so I grew up in Tillamook, but I was since, like I said, I was born next to Salem. I actually grew up with my grandparents. Okay. Um, because my mother was on drugs. Mm. She was using methamphetamines, and so was my father. And he was in and out of prison. Little side story already. Uh, he wasn't even there for my birth because when I was born, he was driving drunk and got in a wreck off of a bridge. Like, drove off a bridge and then went to prison. Wasn't there for my uh, my birth. Off of a bridge. Off of a bridge. So, so it was a bad start. Uh, in his regards, yes. You know, I was still born. So I would say uh, that's the redemption. You know those small towns, right? So, I mean, drug use is pretty rampant, right? I mean, It's crazy. It, I mean, you, you watch these shows sometimes and you're like, you see these little small towns, and, and they're just overran sometimes. Is it because it's boring? Is it because it's nothing else to do? Or, yeah, or, yeah or I think it's a lot of that. Hopelessness? I don't know. I think for myself, too, you know, a lot of sin for people, and including myself, is when you're bored. If you're not busy and doing something or with the Lord, 
you're just bound to fail. Um, I would say that that's the mentality over there, but also everyone's on drugs in every city, you know? Yeah. So it's it's crazy everywhere, but uh, yeah, Oregon was special. <laughs> yeah, special kind of. I guess maybe like you said, when it's a smaller town, it's just highlighted more, right? Yeah, exactly. Every little thing's highlighted. Every- exactly. He's on drugs. Oh, he stole this or yeah, whatever. Yeah, he got yeah, in yeah. trouble. And right? everyone knows it back, you know, hometown. Yeah. So word gets around exactly. the town quickly. Exactly. Right? It for, did for me. <laughs> it did for me. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that, though. So so growing up with your with your grandparents, they, yeah. they were, uh, I, I assume they, they just took the role as your, your parents, right? Yeah. They just they, raised you? For the, my first eight years or seven years of life. And man, what a, that was a blessing from that just because they introduced Jesus to me. Um. Yeah, like they were so loving that when I'd get in trouble at school, that they would give me gifts after I got in trouble because I was so <laughs> bummed out about it. Like that's some grandma and grandpa love for yeah. sure. Um. Yeah. No, it was a blessing. I miss them for sure. Yeah. They're yeah. Oh, they're gone now. They're gone now. Yeah, wow. yeah. For a few years now. Okay. But, man, talk about how to love somebody. So yeah, I mean, there's something special about grandparents. They, sh- they show you Jesus. They just, they got a special type of love. I yeah. mean, definitely got a special type of love. Um, so you leave after, with your grandparents, and then w- where do you go? So my mother finally got off drugs, okay. and she met a man who was stable and, like, you know, had a house and all that uh, in Tillamook. So what they did is we're going to go visit mom. The rough streets of Tillamook. The rough streets of Tillamook, yeah. man. Getting that cheese. Crack cocaine is super, <laughs> super <laughs> rampant out there. Uh yeah, so my grandma and grandpa actually took me to Tillamook to to my mother, but they tricked me, and because I was so attached to my grandma and grandpa that I didn't want to leave, so they had to trick me and leave me there. I saw them leave; they pulled off pull, pulled off of the driveway, and oh, snap. I was scared. I was like, "Mom, where, where are they going?" And you know, I had this new guy in my life, uh, stepfather Ray is his name, and I was just a little scared of all the you sure. know, just uncomfortability and. They were or they were uh, spoiling me so much that this whole new life of just like living with my mom and my stepfather in Tillamook was just such a change that I was it was kind of overwhelming. Yeah, just based on that, like my parents left me. It felt like yeah. But uh, did you already feel like abandoned a couple times by by that age, or was that like your first time you really felt abandoned? Like because yeah, okay, yeah, that was the first time I really felt it. Um, but for instance, like just not knowing my father. At that early age, naturally, subconsciously, right. you feel that. Um, but yeah, that was really it. Is your mom a, a stranger to you these days? No, no, no. Back then, yeah. Or did you see her here and there? I saw her here and there, but still, that's a stranger at the core of it, right? Right. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't comfortable around her like that. Just like grandma and grandpa. That's I was like sucking on you know the thumb. Sure. So, yeah. So how, what was life like with uh, mom and uh, stepdad now? Yeah, so, you know, it's tough. Any relationship, marriage, it's not honoring the Lord. There's a lot of lot more toxicness going on. Um, back then, my stepfather was heavy into alcohol. Uh, my mom was kind of in a position where she needed him. And so whatever he said goes. And it got a little bit abusive verbally and physically. And uh, it kind of would get just brushed under the rug. And uh, it's, it gets a little scary at that point for a kid my age, you know? Yeah, sure. Plus, grandma and grandpa just left. So, uh, yeah, all-time uncomfortability. But praise God, because all these great or all those bad things made me who I am today and gave me the perspective. So, How long were you, were, were you there with them? You mean living with them before I turned 18? Yeah. Uh, joined the Army right after that. So, so you was like— I was, I'm out of here. Ten years, so age eight to eighteen, yeah. And were you were you a good kid? Uh, I would say like you know not like a bad kid. I wasn't out here selling drugs or using drugs at the, the young age. So call it what you want. An, an, an adventurous kid. <laughs> adventurous <laughs> kid. We lived on a farm too. I grew up on a dairy farm. Okay. So don't break the uh, chicken coops windows was one of the rules. Okay. Oh, you know I had to. You know I had to. You're one of those wild boys. Uh, yeah, you could probably say that. Just, just, yeah. just a normal kid. Just, just like in a, trouble. a country wild boy. Country wild yeah, boy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you leave to the army. Yep. You, you're, you, are you like, I'm out of here. Like this is, I, I need to get away and. Yeah. Uh, and school wasn't an option. Um, school, my entire high school, I think I cheated my way through. <laughs> so I wasn't like academically high, but um, yeah, joined the army. 
was I, it? What was the motivation with Army to just to get away, or was it because you you were uh, you wanted to be a true blooded American? Yeah, you know, a little bit hero? of both. Okay, so it was like I wanted to get away from that whole toxicness, stepfather. Uh, but <laughs> this is funny. This is super immature of me back then. It, I told my recruiter that I wanted to join the army because I wanted to be a killer. Okay, and. You know, now in retrospect, I'm like, man, that boy. Was, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. So young. What did he do? He. I mean, I'm surprised he signed you up. I mean, that's like. Oh, he loved. You're talking about my recruiter. Yeah. Oh, he loved it. He's like, you're the guy we want. I would have been like, yeah, I don't know about this kid, man. <laughs> he must be a killer, man. Nah, you know, it's, yeah, it's just immaturity. Yeah, for sure. I, but were you thinking that? Were you thinking like? Yeah, I was thinking that. I think I don't know why I was. Probably just. Maybe a little anger in me, yeah. And I thought that w- that would be cool or that would feel good, right? Woo, was I young? <laughs> yeah, no, sir. And did you did you thrive in the military? Yeah. So I've always been fit. I, before I joined the military, I met these group of guys, and this is when CrossFit kind of just started. Okay. And so they got me on this, and I took it very serious because I already saw, saw that I was beating people just from the get go. And so I started to get serious with it. So when I joined the Army, basic training was cake. Uh, shot expert, uh, got the highest PT score in all the platoons, so I got an award at the end. Um, yeah, I excelled for sure. I got the drill sergeants to be on my side. So you're getting, you're finding some identity. Yeah, 100%, right? like a fitness identity. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, for sure. Join the Army. How are things in the Army? It, was it everything you thought it was going to be? So basic training, like, like I said, it was awesome. I did well. Uh, when I got there, so I joined infantry. That was my MOS. And sometimes in the army, they screw you over. Is what I, you know, you probably heard that, right? <laughs> yeah. So I went to a different unit, uh, headquarters unit. And by the way, I lived in Germany uh, for my four years or three years, fourteen weeks. Okay. But uh, I got thrown into that headquarters position, and I was mad and like sick because we didn't do nothing <laughs> that I signed up for. You weren't killing, you were just killing bugs. And I should have joined the (laughs) Marines. That's what I started to tell myself. Right. And, uh, yeah, man, that really hurt. That really hurt. So I played basketball in high school. Whatever I do, I'm very passionate about, and I go a thousand percent. So it's like an addictive personality, sort of. But that transferred right over to the Army in fitness. And then once they did that to me, it really stabbed me. And at that point, uh, authority doing what they wanted me to do in the headquarters, all that, it wasn't, it really hurt me, so. Wasn't your thing. Nah, I just, like, shut down more so. Yeah, so what, what's your what's your duty now in, in, in Germany? Just manning the base, or? That w- that sounds cool, but, <laughs> no, sweeping. <laughs> sweeping, cleaning bathrooms, uh, going to get a captain some coffee. <sighs> um, so, yeah, you know, going from that mentality to let's go get, the guy coffee every day. I was like, man, this is degrading. So you thought you were going to be a soldier and you're 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 a slave. Yes, and I mean, looking back at that, like I should have honored it, right? Honor whatever you do. But um, nah, young Zach was he was heated. That's rough though. I mean, if if you sign up for something with, and, and I'm sure your recruiter told you it was going to be everything that it wasn't, right? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And then you get there and you're like, nah, this is not what I wanted to do. Nope. Nope. Right. We still did all the fitness stuff in the morning. Like, everyone does PT. But, yeah, nah. We weren't doing no infantry. <laughs> Shooting guns? Yeah, we shoot every once in a while. But not like I wanted. You know, infantry is there in the field several times per month. Um, nah, we like once every year. Oh, man. Yeah, I was sick. Yeah. So you do your four years? So three years and 14 weeks was the shortest contract. That was my contract. And I actually got kicked out of the Army because... I acted so bad from that decision. Uh, I started to hang out with the wrong crowd. You know, in the Army, it's from all over the world. You're meeting people from Georgia, from the East Coast, um, some even overseas. So you're meeting all these kinds of people. And I got in the wrong crowd where drugs and alcohol and going to clubs. And mind you, I'm in Germany. So if I could see over the bar, I'm allowed to drink. Yeah, you're legal everywhere. Yeah, so 18, I was at a club acting like 21. Um, and you know that lifestyle, right? That lifestyle is not going to lead to anything progressive. Actually, was the worst decision or, you know, g- going that route definitely was the start of all these other things that are com- that we're going to talk about here in a second, but all that negativity. Did you did you start off partying 
as just as fun? You, in the army, yeah, it started out just as fun. Yeah. Um, the reason why I ask that because I know some people they they they, they want to part like people have said come in here and they wanted a party to rebel, they wanted a party to have fun, they yeah. wanted a party because they never partied. And it just so many different things, you know. Are there are they trying 100%. to get away from something? That okay, so yes, it was for fun in the but, beginning. Uh, so I'm not a partier even today. Like back then in high school, I wasn't a partier. I was a hooper, so all I did was hoop. And in the army, it started as fun, but then it was like, a, okay, they did me like that. Now I feel like this is gonna make me happier. Is you know chasing women, uh, chasing alcohol, just that life. Right. Yeah. Nah. So, so definitely went downhill from there. This is the beginning of the downhill. <laughs> this is the top of the hill. Everybody that wants to join the army, this is what happened. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. No, happens. hey, if you're listening right now, just be sure you really want to join the army because right. I feel like everyone who joins, they really don't know what they're getting into until they're in it. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, you know, sometimes it sounds good, and the recruiter is always going to tell you it sounds better than it actually is. But yeah. you got to really know what you're, what you're signing up for. Oh, they make it sound so sweet. They make it sound so sweet. They try to throw a bonus at you too. Like here you go. It's a big manipulation pro- process. So you get start getting in trouble yeah. in the military. What's it like to get in trouble in the military? Well, what shoot, happens, man? And you can get in trouble just by doing the simplest thing. You know, a little a little abusement verbally going on. Uh, getting screamed at for sure. If you're not up on time, they're gonna break in your room and flip some beds and destroy what you got going on in your room. It's uncomfortable, man. In the army, for sure. I, just military, period. Um, especially if you're not trying to be a good soldier. Yeah. So you were done. You were just like, I, did you want it? Did you want them to? What, what is it? Discharge you? Yeah. So I wasn't discharged just by being bad because in the army they'll try and keep you as long as they can, even if you are being bad. But I actually started to sell drugs with the people that I got involved with. And I was selling it to other soldiers. It was synthetic marijuana called Spice, like a marijuana that you couldn't piss hot for. I remember that. So. Oh, you remember? <laughs> I, I, I never did that, but I yeah, remember yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was big. It's huge. Yeah. And, I mean, so I was just doing that, trying to live this, like, thuggy lifestyle. Um, I was, it wasn't even for the money. It was for the identity. Right. And uh, I actually got caught doing it, and that was the reason I got kicked out with a mixture of, you know, fighting and all that, but... The discharge was from selling drugs. Yeah. Is, is drugs rampant in the military? Oh, it's it's nuts. It's just the same as civilian life, except you just are a little bit m- more careful, you know, on how to pass a test and when it is. And most of those guys don't even care if they piss hot for it. And if you piss hot, what happens? Uh, you won't even get kicked out if you piss hot. You will just have to have extra duty, probably for like 45 days. You'll lose rank, so you'll lose pay as well. Um but they won't kick you out. They'll try and keep you in. But I, when I saw the window to get out, uh, I took advantage. You were done. What was the window? When they said, like, or they caught me doing drugs and selling drugs, that they threatened me, that was the window. Okay, so now I'm just going to push towards that and not listen to no authority, kind of like give up as a soldier. I wasn't a soldier at that point. I was back to civilian life in my mind. Right. And, and you're doing spice and anything else? So yeah, everything. So spice. I was using uh, ecstasy. I was smoking actual weed from time to time because you know it stays in your system. So you had to play with it. Um, yeah, I would say those three things. Quite heavy alcohol. Like you know, Germany's huge on beer. So yeah, yeah. And what what age is this? This is all eighteen. Eight started early. Like as soon as I got in there too, uh, I was just. Bad luck of the draw, I guess. But and you knew the life, right? You knew that that whole culture of of drugs and stuff already. Or were you pretty naive to that? Uh, so I was naive in the part where I thought that I couldn't get addicted. Okay. Because oh, I'm not so, a drug addict. That's cr- that so sounds you were crazy. Naive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the naive for sure. I mean, why I was asking because I mean, if you if your mom was on drugs, did you mm. have like some sort of kind of I I kind of know where this is going. I see my mom go through it. Yeah. I mean. I was aware of all that, that lifestyle, but I wasn't aware that I could fall into it. So right. naive, yeah, in that sense, for sure. Yeah, I think everybody thinks that initially, like, oh, that's not going to be me. You know, yeah. I'm not, you know, I had somebody, uh, our friend Sylvia come in and she talked about turning into a crackhead. And she's like, yeah, it started with a little bud. And then I'm literally a crackhead. And and she goes, I, I, I couldn't fathom how I, I, how I became that. But I, I everything that I thought, 
you know, I, I couldn't be now. Now I am. It's you know? so much easier to happen than the world will think. Oh, yeah. Because the word crackhead, you're like, wow, that person's way off. Right. But they're not actually far from where you are today, even just like here, all three of us, like. Yeah, you, you can just like that. that, just like that. Yeah, right. That's what she said. It was, it was, it was a, it was a few weeks, a month, and wow. it's just like something just was downhill wow. quickly. Wow, she's good now. Yeah, she was on the podcast. I mean, she's great. I mean, okay, it's just a, a, a miracle. I mean, it was just a, a, a crazy story. But out of out of the military, n- now what? Now what's the plan, dude? Oh, you know, it wasn't anything progressive. <laughs> so I got out of the army. I didn't even go home to see family. Uh, I went straight to Georgia with one of the guys I got kicked out with, which also uh, was one of the people I was in that life with. Um, we went straight to Georgia to do the same thing, except it intensified. That's when weed first became legal. So we'd travel from like Georgia all the way to, uh, what's it called, Colorado, where it was legal, and we would grab whatever and drive it back and do whatever. So guns were involved. Uh, just crime started to kind of pick up in my heart. Thinking, it's, did, it's did all, you not just care? It's just an illusion. Uh, yeah, I just didn't really care. Now looking back, no, I didn't even care back then either. Uh-uh. Did you know the consequences though? Because I always no. ask people, yeah, see, no. see, I always ask people like, did you know what could happen? And some people tell me, well, yeah, I can go to prison. I can be addicted. I can. We can be caught. Sure. Whatever. Did you realize that, or you were just like, hey, we're just we're just living? I realized that, but you, the difference between understanding that and actually. Feeling that happen to you is completely different. Once you feel it, oh, you sober up quick. But um, it was still a little bit longer until that happened. Actually, a good story I wanted to say on this podcast. By the grace of God, we were doing a travel from Georgia to Colorado. And in between is Oklahoma, I hope. I mean, I got to check out a map just to make sure. (laughs) um, So we would go through, grab whatever we wanted to grab. One time we didn't grab anything. We came back through Oklahoma. I was so reckless that we were speeding. I was going 100 miles an hour at night. It's like midnight, so you're bound to get pulled over. I opened a bottle of vodka. I took one sip. What do you know? We got pulled over. Um, We had a gun on us at that time, too. No drugs, but we had a gun on us, and they pulled us over. I was with three black people. And you know how police sometimes be with black people. So instantly they told us to get out of the car. They didn't even give us a well, reason well, why. Well, look, if I see some crazy white boy with black people, oh, you, it's all bad. Oh, it's all bad. Something's going on. All bad. And you smell a little vodka in here? This is not normal. No. What black was it? people, white people would only hang out when they're getting high. Or, you know what I mean? It's, it, or they're going to church. What? Are, yeah. yeah. No, the crazy part the was. don't believe either. No, never. <laughs> the craziest part was is that it was me, my homie, my homie's girlfriend, and his grandma, because they had family, the girl and the grandma, in Colorado. So it was like oh, an man. excuse to be with us. But why am I out here going 100 miles an hour with grandma in the car, drinking the liquor, like, in front of everybody? Wow. Man, I was supposed to get pulled over. So to finish the story, uh, they ended up finding the gun in the trunk. It was loaded. Um, Legal gun? Illegal gun? We'll get to that. Okay. Uh, so told us, or they said hands. They pointed their guns at us. We were all, obviously, I was shook. This is the first, like, sobering moment with police I've had. They told me to get in the car. They were saying, hey, we're going to check this pistol, and if it's stolen, you're in a bunch of trouble. And I'm heart racing. I pulled out my military ID that's old, and I gave it to him. Like, he was like, why'd you give this to me? I was, I don't know. I was uh, telling my homie through the window, call my mom. Ah, scared. Anyways, it ran back, and it wasn't stolen, luckily. So now I'm thinking, okay, so am I going to get a charge for having a gun and not registered? The craziest part of this is that Oklahoma, out of all 50 states, is the one state where you can have an unregistered pistol. Wow. So. Wow. Talk about the grace of God, because today I wouldn't even be really sitting here. This could have been a different a different lane in my life if sure. I had that felony. I would have been stuck in that state, doing time in that state. Um. Yeah, it would have just been a mess, but that it's a really crazy story to think about. Like, sheesh. So let's, let's get in my teeth. Are you, are you seeing the, the the flashing red lights now? Like, you know, I always say there's there's signals, right? God kind of sends like this flashing red light to say, "Hey, man, uh, maybe you should pump your brakes a little bit." Are you just still running yeah. running the red lights? <laughs> I think I saw that. I saw that. 
but I ignored it quick, and I didn't think about God. I wasn't thinking about God ever. Um, gr- grandma and Grandpa's, you know, teachings never like popped in your head every now and then, or you were just kind of like, nah, like uh, press those down. Surprisingly, no, because I didn't think I even knew what I had. My grandparents were so amazing that I didn't even know. Wow, that that was the case. So I wasn't thinking like that, and I was still hurt by the army. So, man. Definitely some immaturity, but anyways, they made me pour out the bottle. They let us go. All of us, we were fine. They didn't do anything to us. Really crazy. Just and then, did you continue that life? Yep, yep. There's way. Oh, there's so much more to the story. Um, yeah. So what happened was my homie ended up getting locked up. We went. I went back to Oregon to just where I knew to go. And it what, only what'd you have there in Oregon to, to go back to? Just my mom, your mom, my okay. mom, and like some high school friends or whatever. Uh, when I went back there, go ahead. So, so, so now you're you're a little bit seasoned in the in the the criminal lifestyle, yeah. and you're going back to your little town. What is that like when you run into your old high school friends, and maybe they're in college now, or they're sure. they're, they're, they're Farming or whatever, you know, hundred percent, yeah, right? and they're are, are working at the cheese factory, married, whatever. having kids, right? And yeah. you're over there, like living this. You know, you've experienced another country. You've sold drugs. You've been pulled over. You've been in trouble, uh, done drugs, and now you're going back. And they're like, "Hey, who is this Zach, man? What happened to Zach?" This right? You know? No, yeah, my face looked different. <laughs> um, joining the military too. They were all looking at me a certain way. Uh, small. Minded kind of city, you know, a small mentality kind of city, but not like drugs is a big mentality. But uh, yeah, I just continued the lifestyle. Um, rap music was the death of me. I love rap music still to this day. Um, but who, that's, who did you listen to? Who back back then? It was a lot of just like Lil Wayne. Oh, it was Wayne. Lil okay. Wayne is actually shout out to Lil Wayne. He was the guy who got me to smoke weed for the first time. Oh, really? Well, you know, it was ultimate, ultimately me, but that influence for sure. Right. It was kind of like rap was my dad, and wow. and that's how I treated it without knowing. And that's kind of like what I followed is what they would rap about, and so that's kind of yeah, kind of like my father. You know, when people say that, you know, I think a lot of people don't admit that, right? How mm, much of an sure. influence the music could have on you. Like, you know, I, I, I don't go as far as, you know, I listened to NWA and I wanted to go out and rob and kill everybody. But but music in, in all genres, but I think especially in hip hop, it, it does have kind of an influential thing upon young people. More now than ever. Right. Whether it be for the negative or positive, it can be either one. Right. It, it, it can be to 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 influence a kid to say you know this is what you need to have money girls and 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 cars or fame and get high or or, or, yeah or get high or even to the point of you know being in a gang or being a part of something right i mean it could have a lot of unless you're listening to maybe a jake j cole (laughs) or somebody like that (laughs) or or even a new Kanye, the new kanye stuff where it has a little bit of a message you get some some rappers that'll have a, a little bit of a message in their rhyme but it does have an influence, right? Thousand percent, man. It's 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 almost scary, and it happens to a lot of the youth who doesn't have a father. Like I said, for my father, he wasn't in my life most of my life, ninety nine percent of my life. But it's a good cover up. The rap definitely will fill that void in not a good way, right? Yeah. Because when I was young, I, I would you know I I was a good kid. had a, had a father. We we went to church. Um, you that's know, why you weren't killing folks, like, you know. Yeah, but I, 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 I could tell you every every lyric on, uh, you know, straight out of Compton. I, I, I know everyone. You know, I, I like gangster rap. Grew up in yeah. L.A. There was, you know, I look back and I'm like, it's a little embarrassing, you know, because it's like, okay, you know, like that's that's funny. I used to listen to that when I was 14, 15, 16 right, years old. Right, you know? right. But it was part of the life. But I can see how. It could be influential if somebody's not telling me like, yeah, we don't live like that. Like that's cool you listen yeah. to that, but you know, it's for it's for fun, but that's not a lifestyle. I think for some people it couldn't be just entertainment, like yeah. watching a movie, right? Oh, that's not really real. But I think for some people that can that can be almost like a parent. Sure, sure, hundred percent. Or and you know what? I actually think it affects everybody, even subconsciously it sure. does. You know, for instance, sure. just cursing, like that could shape someone's voice or Whatever, definitely, um, it's just the immature thing, you know, getting into that rap. I still like it, though, you yeah, know, yeah, certain yeah. things, but I just, I look at it completely different, just like how you are saying, more just entertainment, and I actually just try to stay away from it these days. 
Yeah, some of it's just a little a little over the top. You know, it's like, okay. Some, I mean, some of it, we could go down the list. I feel like 90%. Yeah. J. Cole, yeah, he's a good, I like that. Yeah, there's some Kanye. J. Cole. I like some Kanye. I like, you know, I, I, I Nas to me is the GOAT. You know what I mean? Okay. I, and his last couple albums, I thought it was it was solid. I don't think it was. I think it was. I think it was. I think what's the difference is, is this: you have your 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 younger rappers, and mm-hmm. I think uh, the youth of those younger rappers is is portrayed through their music yeah. in a way. And then you got your your seasoned older rappers. Yeah. You know, like like I think when I was younger, you know, when you got a certain age, you couldn't rap no more. I think now you got like. A J. Cole, which, you know, a Kanye, a Nas. No limits. Yeah. There's, there's no, no age limit. No yeah. age limit on yeah. those guys. and But they, they can't rap about what they did, you know, when, right. when they were younger because that's not their lifestyle anymore. Right. So when they rap, sometimes it, it is a more of a, a a mature type of rap. A message-driven kind yeah. of, yeah. I think it's a little bit more message-driven, a little bit more mature. They, they, they can talk about, you know really loving their girl or whatever you know what i yeah, mean a yeah, yeah. little bit of more emotion and, and you're like okay i mean once in a while they do go off the thing you're like okay that's the kind but, of music that lasts though if you does. look at like michael jackson right or even drake yeah like, that's the kind of music that you know is long lasting right still dope um right. you can't be rapping about guns and when you're 50 years old it just kind of looks some some type of way i think j cole said it best in one of his albums he has a song called it's 1985 and, and you know and that's he says i arrived and then he he's talking about how these younger oh, rappers it's 1985 to, uh, arrived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean and then he's talking about how these younger rappers they you know like they're trying to go at him and he's like you're you're not gonna last and and the whole concept of the song is like you're gonna you're gonna keep rapping this way and your audience is gonna grow up and you're going to continue to rap yeah. that way, and your audience is going to be like, "Yeah, I'm not. This is this is dumb now." Yeah. You know what I mean? He hit it right on the head, though, it, it, and it was true. And he's, you know, you're going to be on. You know, at the end, he says, "You're going to be on Love and Hip Hop," <laughs> <laughs> basically. You know what I mean? And it, it, it's true. There's been a lot of rappers. They don't change with the times. Yeah, they're they're they're. they're and he said he raps for it can it can be like a, a a longevity thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, actual career. Yeah, an actual mm. career instead of so, just a hype beast movement. Something in twenty years you can listen to that song again and be like, hey, this song's relevant. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm what not mean? gonna say no names, but yeah, actually I will. Chief Keef, like kind of like that whole he set it off too. Him and Lil Wayne set yeah. off this weird. The, the yeah, I think they yeah. set it off. Let me and not it, say too much though. Yeah, then it got a little bit too much. But I I, I think it's funny. I, I I just wore this shirt, you know what I mean? But we and we didn't want talking about. <laughs> about that but music going back to yeah. that i mean it was it was a important part of your life a hundred percent and still is uh but now it's just worship, worship music. <laughs> i love worship music man for were, sure. were you were you wanting to be those people in those songs or how much did it really influence you were yeah. you yeah yeah okay to, to the t almost like where i wanted to hold a gun or do the same drugs or at least try them or even pick up the microphone myself and embarrass myself you know because people think that that no oh, there's no people out there like that oh yeah there is oh they have movies and that's based on a real person like malibu's most wanted or <laughs> i don't know if you know you might but white boys yeah have you seen that movie yeah. oh but that's an uncommon movie because it was back in the day um that's just funny man because i was really the white boy you were that guy. And in Tillamook, Oregon, like when there's no, you know, crime like that heavy, but I was out there walking like it. You were Tillamook's most wanted? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was Tillamook's most wanted. I was breaking in houses. Man, I was. So my, it got, it got that bad? It got that bad, for yeah. From addiction? Uh, or just crime? Yeah, just living that life and just this illusion of being a thug and uh, just being tough and hiding your feelings and all that, you know? And I was mad, but I didn't know it. I was subconsciously mad. So I, if you ask me, why are you acting like this? It's, what? Yeah, <laughs> this so you, this so, is normal. So we, were you a, a, a Malibu, Malibu's most wanted type of thug, or were you really a thug? No, I was really a thug. Because I, I look at your appearance, and you seem like a nice guy. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but were I you mean, thugging? I got, smile. I got a smile on my face, too. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Um, no, I was really... Playing with guns, like, I really wanted someone to try me. Uh, I really wanted to live the lifestyle of selling drugs and actually earning money and living off of that. Like, I thought it was a consistent thing. Uh, it was my identity. That was your identity. And I was really living by it, yeah. And, and are you, are you, do you have a little crew? Or do you have some, some, some hang-arons? Yeah, you have just, some one guy, that- just one guy, just one brother. 
Um, so and, so in Tillamook, is, is that a gang when you have two guys? It basically, for sure. It only takes two. It only <laughs> takes two. Guys, two. All right, yeah. This is our gang. Funny thing is, like, I was with the one black guy. That you was all, all. So everything. him and I, yeah, like, and that inspired me, which was like a viewpoint, like stupid viewpoint, right? But nah. so you're you get in trouble, breaking in houses, just just regressing from, from regressing that kid that left to the military, regressing. Yep, even more so. And like I said, it was subconsciously, um, and things just got, kept getting worse. So I'm in Oregon now. I also, after all these things are going on, I then meet a woman and this woman I was not necessarily in love with, but I was, uh, using for just her stability, her house. She had money, this, that, and the other. So what ended up happening is I got her pregnant and, uh, I wanted to break up too right after that. But she said, no, I'm pregnant. I was like, you're lying. And she, uh, showed me the, the test. She wasn't lying. And, uh, we tried to get back together. We went through, the nine months, and mind you, during this nine months was probably the most toxic relationship you've ever heard of. So there was cheating involved, there was uh, violence involved, there was smoking while pregnant involved, there was me influencing that as well, uh, and not being there for the mother of my child. Um, a lot of toxicness going on. So we went through all that nine months. So this, so, so this is uh, this is a repeat. This is, an, again, going right. down. Well, this is a repeat of what you went through as a kid. Oh, 100%. That, that's crazy to me. Here, I'll say right? some real stuff. Because the, it, it always happens that way, right? I mean, it, 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 you probably said as a kid, I'll never be like my dad. Or, All the time. I'll never be with a woman like my mom. You All know? the time. I'm going to be different. And then you, it, the cycle continues. Yeah. Here, and I'll even say this just for the camera, and this is a very uh, thing like I never thought I would say or feel, is she had two kids while this nine months was going on, and they got under my skin so bad that I felt what my fathers, both, both fathers felt towards me probably, where they wanted to be abusive physically. I felt that. I didn't act on it, but I felt it, and... That is almost the time I was like, wow, I'm turning into my father. Not just from right. drugs or crime, but even in this aspect when I never thought. It goes back to say, like, being coming a crackhead is much easier than you think. Becoming a father who is abusive, much easier than you think if you have no moral compass. Yeah, no moral compass, yeah. no uh, no example. No, uh, zero uh, example. How to, how to act, how to be. I think that's a, that's a huge thing. I, I don't... I don't give guys an excuse for that, but I, I do think when a guy doesn't have a father for anything, right, to show him mm. how to how to work, to, yeah. to, uh, to work on his car, to, to care for, you know, look out for his mother, whatever it may be, yeah. right, just do the manly things. If you don't have that in your life, it's very hard to for me to blame a guy like I, I look at a guy and I say you know like look where he came from let's let's rewind this for a minute yeah you know he, he didn't have a father so there is going to be a couple a, a big learning curve here a huge learning curve and you have the compassion to be able to say that now most people don't have that compassion and they're just going to say hey throw him in jail he shouldn't be out here and that's what everything me, me and my wife help yeah. married cup married couples we we uh and, and I always look like okay what what example of marriages did they have? And yeah. sometimes that's that's a big part. We ask that question because it's like, and the husband might say, I came from a broken home, man. Like, mm. you know, I, I didn't have anything. And the wife might say, like, I came from a great home. Yeah. And I go, this is the problem. You know what right. I mean? He, he, he needs somebody to show him how to be a good husband. She's expecting him to be like her dad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, and how? Know, and he how does that happen? Yeah, be. exactly. So give him a little room here, you know, and... and you're going to have to put in some work, dude, but this yeah. is going to have to get together. But it, it, it's the same thing like with you. You know, you, you just don't have that example, and you could fall into that that habit really quick. Man, having a father figure or just even a mother figure if your mom's gone or just a mentor at a young age is so valuable. Right. And if you don't have one, it's like, what do you do? You don't. You just go off what you know or seen. Right. I tell Man. men all the time, find somebody that you admire yeah. and get close to him. So if yeah. you admire this guy for... 
his discipline, if you admire this guy for, you know, for his relationship with God, if you admire mm-hmm. this guy for his marriage, for his fatherhood, for his worth ethic, yeah, get to know him, ask him a million questions, yeah, and then try to, you know, there's no reason you can't learn off, you know, off be that coachable. Guy. Yeah. You got to be, co- I mean, if you're there in the first place, so you had some humility to go get a mentor. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about that. I had it all figured out. Yeah. <laughs> so you were getting in trouble. Mad trouble. Um, shoot. I have a list of trouble making things right here. Uh, yeah. Just breaking in the houses. Like crime was at a all time high. Um, but then, like I said, these nine months were going by and I was still living this life. I wasn't using any heavy drugs, like such as like uh, heroin or meth, but I was using every other drug. And when we got to the time to have our child, um, we named him Zariel. It's like Israel, but Zariel. And uh, she was just feeling some pain, like like it was about to happen. It was the ninth month. And so we went into the hospital, and she really wasn't feeling good. And the doctors were checking her out. So we're kind of like, she's sweating super hard because she knew what it's like to have a healthy child two of them and i don't know what's going on so i'm just kind of sitting there you know still trying to be a thug at the hospital so like nothing nothing affects me um but then they ended up coming back saying that that zariel is not alive anymore that he's dead inside of her stomach so it's what that's called is a stillborn baby and i still wasn't aware of like what they told me nor was any feelings hitting me because of the way I was thinking and because for nine months I tried to be getting ready for my son. Tried the best that I could or whatever that was. But um, so it's kind of a shocking moment where you don't know how to react to something like that. Um, so I, was, I wasn't I was crying. I, wasn't, I was just kind of like sh- shook and trying to process everything. And she was crying. Uh, horrible heartbreak. And uh, yeah, so after all that. They did, actually did again. it hit you? I mean, did it did it ever like just like at that point were you were you what were you, what were you thinking? Were you thinking like I really wanted this kid? Were you thinking yeah? Did you have yeah yeah? Okay. I, because that's all I knew. I knew like to be a good father, to try to love whatever is love is to you, you try to do it the best. So I got ready for it and I was excited. I named him and yeah, I was super excited for it. So when it happened, like I said, it was so shocking that. I didn't even know how to react, and I didn't for the longest, for the longest. Uh, we actually got to hold him afterwards. They, you, they'll they actually bring him to you still. So you got to hold him, and still it was not like it wasn't hitting me still, even holding him like, this is my son? Because he even looked like me. Wow. And I have pictures. I don't know. I could probably give you these pictures, and you can throw them up. But um, And she's on drugs, so she's like smiling from the the – surgery or whatever we're going to call it and it's just a weird moment it's an eerie it's the eeriness inside that room was crazy because you because you don't really love her there's there's yeah. a lot of battling there you know i mean and, and then the death of your baby you just it's just yeah there's really no love anywhere in the room you know what I mean? anywhere it, it, there's no peace i guess you could say huh 100 percent and there hasn't been peace. There was no peace before. There was no peace after. It was just me at one of my all-time lows right in that moment. Um, my mom was there, and sh- they actually brought a pastor in to pray over Zariel. And that made me so angry, and I didn't know why I was angry. I was so angry about that because, like, God's not helping my life is what I thought. And why would I bring God into this situation? So I was almost, like, telling him to leave. But I just let it happen just because this is what my mom wanted. And, uh, yeah, so that rest of that night I was at the hospital in this eerie vibe. After that, I resorted to kind of a more effort attitude, a more I don't care about nothing attitude. Um, I was already on that. So now it's on a whole different level, and I'm willing to try any drug. So I started to get into meth. Um, you just are you just mad at the world, mad at God, mad at everybody at this time? Now you're just like everybody. Family couldn't talk to me except for mom, and her and I weren't having a good relationship. Uh, yeah, disconnected from everything. Using drugs is just it numbs you. It's almost like a gateway to it's a gateway to a, the spiritual realm and that feeling, but it's the cheap way to do it. Sure. And so when you use meth, it's like you you won't even feel pain. Uh, 
You're up for five days. You're sleeping for three days. So you're on meth now? I'm on real life meth. I'm not shooting it, but I'm smoking it. I'm snorting it. Um, I'm like I said, I'm up for five, six days straight. Uh, whew, man, I couldn't even. When I talk about this stuff, I can't even remember that Zach. I almost forget. It's wild, super wild. Um, moving forward from that, I'm using drugs so much. I'm not wanting to live with her because now it's like, I'm, it's cringy to me. There's no connection. There's no connection. My stepfather and I aren't along still. We don't like each other, so I don't go home. So I'm now homeless, and I'm just kind of couch hopping uh, from friend to friend. And I have very many friends, so probably two people. From that point, I would just try to do my daily thing. I like basketball still, so, man, I would actually use meth and then go play basketball. <laughs> What's that like, bro? Man, I actually thought I was, you know, I thought like you just conf- <laughs> you're actually confident, but a couple times like I thought I was ready to have a heart attack. Oh, yeah. Heart start pumping. Yeah, it was it was not okay. Were you, were you better on D with a little bit of meth? <laughs> just for about five seconds. Okay. And then before you have the heart attack. I, I'm glad you said that. I, that was a wrong question. If you would have said yes, then we got a lot of kids right? trying yeah. to hoop with. Nah, yeah, okay. nah, you'll die. You will die from using meth. And so you're just hooping through the day. So I'm just hooping just to keep my mind off stuff while using drugs. What's, but, what's fueling your drug money? Because you got to have money to get drugs. That's crazy. Well, yeah, that's true. But meth is also the cheapest drug and the strongest drug. So, you know, off $10, you can have it last six days. So, hey, mom, Man. can I get some can I get some cash? Man, so that's also why I was on meth because it was just an easy drug. So I started to play basketball in this 3v3 league. And I was playing, still using, still homeless. And I met this guy named Ryan Motsinger. And he knew about everything that I had going on with my son, just with my life. Um, I think the whole Tillamook, the whole kind of city knew what was going on with me because I was just so reckless. And uh, through this basketball, he would speak to me as my my first mentor. And he was revealing who Christ was to me. Jesus was to me, and I was denying it every time. I was actually sick of him at that point, where I would hide from him. He'd invite me to church, I'd deny it. He'd invite me to church, I'd deny it. I was actually thinking, this guy's psycho. But after all that, he was still loving on me, and he ended up giving me his pickup truck. Just a little, like, a uh, little Uzuzu. I can give you the picture to that, too. <laughs> little niece, or no, it was a, yeah, a Zuzu pickup with two seats. And so I, I was like, okay, now I have a home. Now I was living wow. in my pickup, and I was actually excited about that, which is super funny. Like, that's a big achievement in my life. Um, but now I'm not living on a couch. I'm on my own. So if I'm using drugs, smoking weed, drinking, now I can do it in my Okay, but car. it gets cold in Oregon, dude. Oh, it gets cold and wet, raining. Right. So you're living in a single cab, pickup a truck? Sing- no recline. No recline. <laughs> yeah. Freezing. Freezing. Okay. And just like... Showers weren't a thing, but I was kind of used to that because the army, 40 days without a shower, easy. But um, not outside the army. I would, you know, get a shower once a week, call it good. But I didn't have no connection. I wasn't chasing women at that point, at least for the dating reasons. I was still shambled out, right? Um, But, yeah, so here we are. Now I'm addicted to drugs, homeless living in my truck, no relationship with anybody except for this guy, Ryan. And it wasn't like I didn't give my half to him but he definitely influenced me and now to look back at it like ryan was the goat he's like planting those seeds oh my gosh planting those seeds and he was there for so excuse me when i had my son pass when my son passed he was having a son as well so there was a connection of like when i got to hold his son i was that's when it hit me i held his son and i started to just ball and I'm not Christian. I don't have no Holy Spirit. I don't have no compassion yet. But this is like the first time I felt some like, uh, some, some heartbreak. Right. There was other heartbreak, but I, I covered it. This one I couldn't cover. That was just a moment where I was like, "Wow, this is things are really down." And he started to cry. So he saw. He had the compassion for me. And yeah, that was, I'm actually surprised I remember that because wild. That was my all time low right there. Moving forward, though, um, man, moving forward, I'm trying to think of what happened after that. 
Oh, so Grayson, my cousin Grayson, for those who are listening. So you're a rock bottom. Oh, rock bottom. Nothing. Rock but, bottom. But, but a truck. Soulless. Soulless. And, yeah, exactly. And I would, this is the point, too, in my life where I started to question life. Not, like, suicidal, but more like, is there a God? And, like, if there is, why? Because Ryan's speaking to me. So is there a God? And if there is, why is this happening to me? And why... Why isn't God helping me? Or just those questions started to pop up. So definitely, a, 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 th- this is a legit question, right? I mean, you grow up in a messed up home. You, yeah. get, you know, your 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 grandparents have to give you back to your mother. There, there's bad relationships there. You go to the army, try to do something positive, and yeah. it turns out it's not what you dreamed of. And you get on drugs. A lot of bad decisions probably in it's in there by not only you but maybe those around you. Yeah, and then you make a lot of decisions too. But it, it does seem like just a lot of bad luck, horrible bad, bad decisions. decisions. Yes, and, everything and, that and, happened and, to me was brought because of me. I brought everything okay. to the table. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because a lot of I, I think a lot of people. I mean, initially to start off life, you don't have no choice, right? You, yeah. We all start off where we start off some you know some better than others you know it, but it gets to a point where you're you are responsible for your own actions your own things yeah um i i think i like that about people when they say it's, it's all on me yeah I, you get to you know you get some people where they just continually blame well look how i got brought up look, or look yeah. at look at this or you know even even you know the death of your son i you know i'm pointing at that but you yeah. get to a point where it's like no there's something's got to change even that you know, even that, how it happened, how she got pregnant to the life that I was leading us and, like, allowing her to do certain things. Like, yeah, it was all my own decisions that brought this pain. And you have – this is a humbling moment, so I'm able to say these kind of things. Yeah. And like you said, a lot of people don't get to that humbling moment. Yeah. So, yeah, man. And Grayson, so those who don't know, is the professor. He's my cousin, and – He's hearing, he's catching wind, because my whole family, I'm not speaking to, so they're kind of on some, uh, which most of them don't know Christ, so I would say that coming from that perspective, they were like, oh, Zach's just out here screwing up, and you know, he's just a troublemaker, and that was their, that was it for them. So they, 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 they're like, you would knock on their door, and they're like, nope. Well, I wouldn't have knocked on the door, because I was so like. They, they don't want no part of you. Didn't, and I didn't want no part of them, okay. yeah, exactly. Okay. So, again, that was me. Me bringing that energy, so of course, like that's how they would act. Um, but Grayson caught wind, and by then Grayson's Christian. He's came to Christ, and he's almost seeing a moment to just talk to me. Uh, it also got to the point where it was getting so bad. He's like, "Hey, just pack your stuff up, just come to LA today." And I heard that, and I was just kind of shook. So I denied it. I said, "Nah, I'm good," because I almost liked, I almost liked all the chaos, all the pain. I almost liked it. It's a weird concept Sometimes to think it's about. it's easier, right? Oh, it's that's exactly it's it is easier. Less responsibility, right? No expectation, so you can't fail nobody. You're already a failure, so you know what I mean. That that is an easy place to get into and just sort of like a give up mentality. Um, but Grayson reached out to me, said that I denied it because I liked it this lifestyle, but it kept getting worse. I'm in and out of jail at this point, um, in and out of jail for just stuff like harassment. Uh, back to not caring about nothing, living this thug life. I would go up to people's houses who had beef with me. If they talked to me on Facebook like trash, I would show up to their house. And, yeah, no, was one guy drew a gun on me and everything. That's That was another sobering moment. But no, it's so funny how all this stuff that happened to me, nothing changed me. Like, nothing was scared me straight. And nothing could have scared me straight. Did, did, did you just have a death wish or did you just no i wasn't ever thinking like that i wasn't ever thinking suicidal terms or like i hope something happens to me Uh uh-uh i just uh didn't care didn't care and it's like we like i said it's easy to not care and to feel broken and kind of like rest in that i think those are the most dangerous people yeah the people that don't care yeah like don't they don't care and i and i mean that in a way of consequence right like it, it either be death either be jail either it be getting some sort of trouble injured hurt whatever it may be like those people are the most dangerous to me because if they don't care they'll do anything 
Yeah, and if they don't care about themselves, like how, I'm not gonna care about you. No. So, so it, it don't matter what happens. To me to come to your knock on your door. Yes. I was ex- like, I was excited to do that. Yes. Sadly, sadly though. Sheesh. And then, and then Grayson. So is the professor. Everybody knows we have the professor on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I mean, for him to throw you, you know, a, a lifeline. I mean, listen, man. I mean, I'm not gonna throw you a lifeline to come live with me. I'm. I'm, I'm He's pretty successful. To yeah. Throw your lifeline. It, it really is is putting himself on the line. Really, right? To really say, "Hey, come and stay with me." The I, family said no. The family told Grayson, "Don't do it." Yeah, I mean, I, I, by all accounts, I mean, I, I'll be honest. It just it, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Right? It doesn't. Yeah. I mean, he, he he's been there, done that, uh, successful, and to. Throw, throw you a lifeline it, it, it just adds a uh, A big wrench in his program Yeah oh, Man Grace of God man So Yeah So yeah how that all went down Is he didn't even want to do it But He just came to Christ I mean not just But a few years ago Before that happened And uh, He went broke You remember his story He went broke So we're not Broke when This is happening When he's asking me stuff He's not broke then It was just like The beginning of his uh, return to coming back up into the space. That's when his faith was at his highest. His career started to come back. He felt called by God to reach out to me and extend this wow. kind of like maybe here's a new progressive life. Maybe not for Christ, but like to start living a progressive life and hear Christ. That's it. Just to hear it. And so when he invited me a second time, because more things were going bad in and out of jail, I really thought about it because I was questioning God and all this. And he had rules. If you want to do this, you can't smoke. You can't drink. You can't go party. You can't use drugs. You can't go out with a bunch of women. You can't do all these things. And you have to go to church. And th- this moment, I'm on the phone with him talking and uncomfortable. First time I have ever, ever had accountability in my entire life or just someone talking to me like that. And... I'm so uncomfortable, but I knew it was the way to change my life. I didn't know why God had to have put it in my heart because it didn't make sense that I would have wanted to go do that. And this is funny because back when I was young, living with my grandparents, I idolized Grayson when he was on And One Street Ball on TV. And I would see him, you know, like twice a year. But those moments were so big for me. I really idolized him. Yeah, as a hooper, a kid that's a hooper, those those N one you know yeah. days and like I'm and, not the and, only one and knowing the professor and, and let's be honest, and him being from your you know your family your yeah. town from Oregon yeah. I mean it just little white boy that that's blew up I right lined up my hair yeah. like his <laughs> same everything baggy shorts 2003 I mean, like right yeah Iverson you know it's, yeah. just, it's just yeah I mean it, it, it he was like an idol to you yeah. And it's crazy because it's not just to me either, right? Like yeah, a lot of people lot feel of people. the same way I do, but mine was extra close, obviously. So when we're having this call, this is the only person on earth that I would listen to. And it was sort of like out of intimidation of someone being, you know, famous and on TV and like I idolize them. So there's a, not an intimidation, but like a respect factor there where I wanted to please him. I wanted to, yeah, so... That's what made my decision to agree and go to L.A. on January 1st, 2016. So, Which is crazy, right? Because you're coming from, you know, a, a, a drug background, a, a crime in little town. And, and and probably by all accounts, everybody say, do not go to L.A. It's just it's going to it's going to yeah. it's going to be so many more opportunities. Right. right. In a big town. Yeah, ab- absolutely. So everyone or not everyone, but a lot of people who come out here from a different hometown have a weird viewpoint of it, of LA or even New York. Right. Right. So yeah, when people come out here, they're getting more into trouble. And I could have thought to myself, like, I'm just going to get with Grayson. I'm going to dip out, go back to living my life because it was uncomfortable. Yeah. It'll be fine. It'll be actually lit because it's California. That's the mindset people have. And, uh, man, it's so funny. The exact opposite of all that stuff happened. Um, so I moved, to L.A. with Grace in January 1st, 2016. Um, the first two weeks there, it was raining. So, you know, someone coming from Oregon, 
going to California. I'm like, oh, it's going to be sunny. It's going to be awesome. What it's is this? Be, yeah, what is this? It's like home. <laughs> what is this? And, you know, God definitely has a funny way of doing things. Um, at that point, I'm sleeping on the couch for Grayson just because, like I said, he's not uh, fully back in his career yet. We're still at kind of a, a building phase for him. I'm sleeping on the couch, and there's bug bites. I'm getting bug, uh, bed bites or bug bites, whatever you call them. Getting that. We were living in Canoga Park, for those who do know the valley. So yeah. it was a different area. Yeah, Canoga's pretty rough, too. Yeah. The valley's not It's not Karate Kid, that's for sure. Nah. And I was embracing it. I was kind of like, oh, this is this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Like, this is the hood. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, so, yeah, we started to go to church. Like I said, that was one of the rules. I would still be smoking. I would still be drinking behind his back. I was addicted, by the way, to cigarettes, smoking eight years plus. What about the drugs? Um, was I addicted? Were you doing? Were you still doing them when you came down a little bit? Oh, for sure, like smoking weed. But you know, meth. Uh, I I stopped using meth. That's the point where I stopped, and it was more so because Grayson's accountability. Yeah, and you can't use meth and just be kicking it like you'd, right. you'd be too fidgety or something. Uh, or on any drugs, you can't hide that. Even smoking weed, Grayson knew what I had going on. You yeah, could, you could smell it. You see how I'm acting. Um. But I would use excuses like, hey, I'm going to young adult service. Uh, I'd go early, go get high, and then show up to young adult service. Like, yeah, these clowns talking about Jesus, fairy tale stuff. Um, I did that consistently for like two months, still trying to hoop, just like, I know, whatever reason. And one time at young adult service, I showed up high again. They did an a altar call or had you pray to give your life to the Lord. And... I did it, and I thought in my head, I have nothing to lose. Life is at an all-time low. Let's test. Let's test all this stuff they're talking about, which is probably not, like, biblical, but... No, I, I love that, though. Yeah. Like, hey, I don't got nothing to lose. Uh, let's see if the Jesus is going to work. With that attitude, too. Okay. Like, an attitude like, I don't believe it's not going to happen. Right. And I'm like, I, I, I think God lo- loves that, too. He's like, okay, son, let's, I'm going to yeah. show you what's up real quick. 100%. 100%. <laughs> Man. So, I did that. And I just remember someone either preaching to me or Grayson telling me, now you need to be Christ aware, meaning you need to be like just looking out. You can't just give your life to the Lord and and not be aware of what's your surroundings or be looking for Jesus. So now I kind of am like looking for signs and thoughts and vision or whatever, right? And everything with a purpose. Yeah, right? every yes, exactly. Everything with a purpose and... Now Grace and I are at this point where I'm like, okay, I want to get healthy now. And now we're writing down like the things I love so I can find my passion because we were on, you know, if you find your passion, your purpose may lie within that, just like Grayson's, right? Yeah. Um, so he had me write a list of all the things that I loved. And I wrote, I wrote music. I wrote basketball. I wrote fitness. I wrote Jesus just because like, oh, I'm a Christian now, I guess. So screw it. Let's write Jesus. But then something in my head told me to erase Jesus and put him at the top because that's like what you're supposed to do. Mm. So I did. And it's crazy. It is crazy because the Lord works so crazy. I saw Jesus. I saw fitness. And then I realized what Jesus did was sacrifice on the cross. And then I came up with this word sacrifice. Like you got to sacrifice to get fit. Sacrifice. And that was really catchy. And Grayson was kind of like, also shook that like that was too good like that's weird and i was like man this is i like that and so fitness from that point on became my another identity sort of like which you kind of knew right which i kind of knew back before the army but now it's like okay we're going on this back to this progressive wave sort of i'm getting back in shape mind you i I gained a lot of weight too i should show you the picture like (laughs) big cheeks too i was drinking 240s a night but so you get big cheeks doing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Started to go on this progressive way with fitness. And uh, now I'm seeing the Lord work. Right. I'm seeing it work in that aspect. And I'm like, is this just a not a miracle? I didn't believe in miracles, but is this one? And things started to overflow in my life. I was posting things about fitness, but I was venturing out there, mixing passions, basketball and fitness, doing basketball, CrossFit workouts. And... You know, Instagram loves uniqueness or just social media loves uniqueness and they would boost my stuff. So now Oregon kid on drugs, 
Jesus was at the top of his list now. And I'm seeing 40,000 views, 50,000 views on videos that I'm making. I'm like, what's going on? Like, things are changing. And not the fact, not to say, like, views or doing well on social media means, like, you're with, you're blessed or anything. Because that's not the case. But God was definitely showing me something. That he's out here and he's working for my favor. And it was just as simple as believing. Yeah, from a guy that... that didn't have anything. Nothing, yeah. And, and now there, he got some passion w- w- for something. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's huge. Yeah, it you is know, huge. A passion and a purpose to say, somebody likes what I'm doing. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not like you're doing it for likes, but it, there is something that you when you come from nothing and somebody says, yeah, that's pretty good. It's exactly right. That's the feeling that I was feeling is, wow, so people actually like me? Oh, crazy. Right. They don't know, they don't know what I got going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, where I've been. Yeah, or where I've been or what I've been doing. Like, man. So things just started to elevate from there. And that kind of built, yeah, some passion. And it built some confidence. And it was bringing me back to just that healthier lifestyle. And now I'm taking church a little more serious. Not, like, super serious. I wasn't fully plugged in. But now I'm listening to the word. I'm listening to uh, the preacher preach. And I'm kind of finding a little bit of joy, finally, in this. And I'm starting to see that. In my day to day, I can recognize sin like everywhere in my life. It's literally everywhere, and I'm. This is a moment where my transformation or being born again is all happening, um, and it happens so fast because I was only in California and LA for two months. Um, so I almost felt like, is this forced? Am I forcing this? But no, the the Lord can work that fast with folks, and sure. you definitely, or even faster, right? It doesn't. There's no time limit on God. Um, and it was just happening supernaturally fast. It was shocking. Wow. Yeah. So so I always tell people it was there a a point where you just God just touched you, you 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 felt it and it was a changing there, or was it like you said, was it a progress thing? Yeah. Or did you get to a point where it was like, man, you had an encounter? Yeah, no, there was both. It okay. was both. So yes, it is a it is a process, and uh, the encounter was a moment for sure. Um, you know, worship music. I actually didn't even like it at first because I was just a rap head. But worship music, when I started listening to the words, and I found a song that I actually found beat, it tore me up, and I didn't even know why I started to cry. I was just overwhelmed with this this feeling, which is a hundred percent the Holy Spirit. Um, but it just took over. I was on tears. I dropped to my knees. I didn't know what was going on. It was almost scary, a scary moment, and made me realize all the sin in my life, all the things that were happening was from sin. Because, you know, as a non-believer, you don't know, like, what that means, right. like sin and how that can impact you or inf- affect you. And uh, I started to see it. I started to see sin in rap music and that's like that's super apparent. So now right? you're feeling like conviction. You're Mad feeling like, conviction. like you're like this is not right, and you're probably tripping out. Like I never felt this way before. Yeah, and I never realized yeah. too that this is what it's from. And so now I can kind of like work from that and just know where to progress and what not to do and what to do and all these things. Still immature, of course. You know, you don't mature up right yeah. away. But yeah, it's definitely a crazy. Is, is Grayson tripping out on the transformation here? Yes, he is. He's very, you know, he's a very even keel dude. So, like, in the moment, he keeps everything so 100 that I couldn't tell. But now, in retrospect, oh, it's mind-blowing. Um, the whole story is just mind-blowing. I think I think God used him, man. I mean, in, in, a, in, a, in a huge way. I mean, he took a gamble on you. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 was a, it was a huge gamble. And, and now I know you help him. So, not only yeah. is it, it yeah. is you... He, he helped you took a gamble, but you help him with everything that he does. Talk, talk a little bit about that. For sure, for sure. It's funny because, like I said, he didn't want to bring me at the core to L.A. at all. And we started to get so connected as, like, brothers. We were reading the word together. We were – he would edit his videos, and I'd kind of just sit there and watch, kind of, like, learn just for fun, just for, like, my videos. There was no thought of nothing – with me working with Grace and none of that. But as I kept editing my own fitness videos, I just started to get better, started to ask Grace and like, oh, how do I make this doper? How do I make some more swag into this edit? He would teach me. 
Then it got to the point where I was getting pretty good, like almost as good as Grayson, just taking it on my own. And funny thing is, we lost our videographer. He had something going on, I think school or something, when it took over his uh, his schedule. And it was like an open door, open opportunity to, just for a trial. And he's like, hey, try, try this video for Instagram clip, like real, real small. And I crushed it. I crushed it. And he started to realize maybe this is where Zach is supposed to go. Wow. And it's funny because, like, I was supposed to just be there for two months in L.A. with Grayson and then go move somewhere and just hopefully I figure it out. But it started to turn where him and I are full on co-workers. I'm his editor. I'm his videographer at this point. It took a learning curve, but, like, Grayson was the biggest mentor in my life. I was willing to listen to anything he said. Plus, he's successful, you know? If someone's successful and you're not, it's some evidence that they know what they're talking about and you don't. So I was being very coachable. And, uh, man, we started making videos. And my first video, not to, this is by all means not bragging. This is all for the Lord. But my first video did 1.3 million views. And, yes, Grayson's so talented that it was probably predicated on that. But the fact that I was attached to that, now my confidence is through the roof. The Lord with me, I'm just like, okay, this is the way. I'm a full-on believer at this point. And, uh, man, seeing redemption start to happen Yeah, like this. Yeah. The, the amazing story, man. Um, and, and I like the part where you found a mentor in your cousin, yeah. which was a guy that you looked up to your pretty much your whole life as a hooper, right? And yeah. he's this great hooper. But... You know, the iron sharpened iron there too. Yeah. You know, you're reading together, you're 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 some accountability on both your sides. He's accountable to you too. Yeah. He's gotta live right because he wants you to live right. Example. So he's, he, yeah. yeah, he's gotta set the example. You're setting the example. I, I think the the mentoring thing in 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 anybody, you know, men because that's who we are, um, is is huge. You know, just to find somebody that's gonna challenge you, it's gonna hold you accountable. Um, somebody that's going to hold themselves accountable and, and, and then somebody you can learn from, you know, get a yeah. coach. You're, you're coachable. And I'm sure now you're like, no, I, I know a faster way how to edit this. Or I know how to make this dope. Yeah. And you're kind of like building off of each other. I, th- I think that's the greatest part of, of, of that story there. I mean, spiritually, uh, professionally, yeah. uh, you know, you guys are successful. I, I think that that was, uh, it was definitely uh, what you, probably craved your whole life you finally got it yeah and still today he's that person with me we're still working together we're still it's even more so now not just editing and not just uh filming it's it's full-on business we're doing everything together um he obviously has some other side things going on that i'm not attached to but there's so much purpose in my life so much brotherhood in my life now so much he's still my mentor to this day uh things are really really great the blessings are amazing and praise god let me let me ask you this um did did uh any of the family members ever see the new zach and 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 go this this is not this is unreal yeah so you know we both went home for christmas took me with him i didn't want to go i was still a little i still had some things i was carrying on probably right not just salty but just like yeah maybe salty or just still like a little cool on me i had a, a little bit of cool on me still but I went, and yeah, oh, night and day, a different Zach, and they noticed it. But you know, people don't give credit where credit's due. Not to Grayson. He definitely had a big deal with this, obviously, and they just gave him all the credit. In reality, it was the Lord, a thousand percent Jesus, and I know you, you know that, but the fam didn't know that, and it was the easy say, the easy thing to just throw it onto Grayson. So Grayson and I were both a little. You know, like bummed out about that. Yeah, because uh, yeah. you want that. You want, as a believer, you want the testimony to be, this is what Christ did. Yeah, yeah. Christ used Grayson. Yeah, you did the work because you still have to do the work, right? Yeah. And but yeah, you wanted to kind of. But I, I think in the end, you know, ultimately it, it is a testimony of 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 Christ. I mean, yeah. it, and what he's done in your guys' life. Yeah, maybe they don't give the credit up front. But behind the scenes, they mm. they, they know your mm. con, you know your consistency. They know everything that God used with Grayson and you. I, I think uh, I think people maybe they don't let on because you know their own personal view or yeah. it's unreal to them. But yeah. I think it still plants a seed in them that 
oh, it worked for this kid that was breaking in the houses and just man tearing up this Tillamook uh, <laughs> area. <laughs> exactly, you know, and just to look back, right? Like look back on that life. I'm actually today happy about the abuse. I'm happy about. Not necessarily happy about what happened to my son, but happy how God used that because of my testimony now. It really is a great thing, the, the struggle. There's so much to be learned in the struggle and building character. For instance, Grayson and I, we went to, uh, I won't even drop names, but we went, went to a party where we were with kids and we were there for the kids. And these kids were, had very wealthy parents. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can see how... Growing up a certain way will directly f affect your character, such as living in a rich family can affect your character in negative ways. Sure. Like we all think, oh, I want to, I wish I was rich when I was a kid or I want to be rich, but you don't understand what comes with that. Right. Or you don't want to have to go through these struggles, but there's some greatness that can come from that. Right. And I'm just at this season in my life where I'm so content. I'm thankful that that happened. Uh, just to make me who I am today for the Lord. Yeah. There is some power in the struggle. I, I was telling somebody the other day, I was saying, you know, all the all the Bible characters that we, you know, when we look at regular guys and, and maybe they fall or have some struggles, um, you know, we, we hold them to this high criteria sometimes. Yeah. And then I said, but if we look at all the Bible characters that we so admire, the Davids, the Jonas, the Daniels, you Shout know, out to Paul. Uh, uh, Paul, right? They all <laughs> yeah. had some, some Peter. They all had yeah. some flaws, man, especially like Peter. Like when I think about him, it's like he's seen all these miracles. Jesus says, come out on the water, and, 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 and he steps out and he sinks, right? Yeah. And then he he he, he knows where, the, where, where, this, where, where the Lord's being led to, which is the cross, and, and he wants to pull out his sword. And then he denies Jesus, right, right. The three times, and some flaws. And, and you think, yeah, man, he, you know, but... Peter ends up being this great guy in the second part, and after Christ, you know, lit, you know, goes on to heaven. Um, second part of his life is 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 like phenomenal. He's like this this hero, yeah. David. You know, he had these flaws. You know, we hear about him killing the giant, but he we know what he did after that, and, yeah. and sinning and falling into sin, and 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 then he's this great man in the Bible. So men in the Bible always have some some flaws. You know, some things that are just challenging and and, yeah. and, and 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 it is with the struggle though it is with i think the lord uses the human element of those flaws and says yeah i'm gonna use this for what for my glory yes you know what I mean? yes it, it, it's it's like he takes those things and then the connection right you can connect to somebody else that's lost a, a baby yeah you, know, you can connect to somebody that has been addicted to drugs you can connect to to not only the the, the kid in oregon that wants to be a thug but you can connect to the the guy in LA that 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 is addicted to math, and yeah. and, and God uses the struggles that you had to say to, and, and and it seems like it always happens this way, where God sends those people to you, right? Yeah, and you're like, yeah, that was me, you know, like like, yeah. like I've been there, bro. Man, I have more compassion for, and I, I, that makes sense, right? Whatever struggle you went through is the, where you'll have your compassion, right? So I did a lot of things the wrong way, so I have a lot of compassion for a lot of things, um, you know, like especially. Without having a father, kids who don't have a father, homelessness right. that that will tear me up. I'll definitely want to serve for that. Um, yeah, and to go back on the Peter thing, it's funny because we were just watching me and my girlfriend were watching uh, Passion of the Christ, and it's it would be easy to like say, I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, what Peter did, we always I wouldn't that. deny the Lord, but like we, we, we do that. though. Yeah, we we do now, and we would in a certain scenario, not necessarily would, but. We're human. Yeah, I, I think I think for sure I'd, I'd pull out my sword if they wanted to arrest Jesus. You know, even though I know what's going on here, he told us, you know, what he's going to do. And yeah. here they come to arrest him. And I'm like, yeah, man. And, and Jesus has to check me, right, and tell me, hey, man, don't try to stop the mission here. Yeah. We're, 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 stop. You know, put it, <laughs> yeah, put it away. Out. Like, okay, Lord. You know, I mean, it's – it. There is things that we do, and we we think that we're 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 better than that, or we wouldn't do that. But it, it, I think the Lord. I always say there's a great human element in the Bible, and I think it's there because it, it does show us that they were human too. You know, I, I always like the story of Ananias, and 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 so you know they 
God tells him, hey, go to go to the city and meet Saul, which is, you know, the persecutor of the church. Yeah. And, he, and, and, and Ananias, what, he, wait, you know who you're, basically he's saying, you know who you're sending me to? This, this, this guy is the guy that, you know, kills Christians, you know, <laughs> yeah. that kills us. You're, yeah. You want me to go there, Lord? And you know what? I, I love that part about the yeah. Bible because something I would do. Mm. Like, are you sure? That, yeah. Like, they, do you know who that guy is, Lord? Like, uh, we don't know he knows, right? I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny we don't know he knows you know like, like he, he knows you know my friend was telling me the other day he was like i was i was mad at god but i didn't want to tell him but i go that's funny he already knows you were mad at him you didn't want to tell him yeah like <laughs> he knows everything so it's fine you can tell him it's over. Already, yeah you yeah. might as well now he already knows yeah man what a great story so where is zach at now man and w- w- where are you at now bro where am i at now you know especially in today's day Past two weeks have actually been the most emotional two weeks I've had since those moments. And it's for the greater cause. Like, I've I've never felt the spirit more than I do now. Never been in the word more than I am now. I am actually currently uh, fasting, doing the Daniel fast. Nice. Um, that's why I had that acai, acai bowl. That's oh, yeah. what I'm surviving on the <laughs> acai bowls. Oh, I can survive on those. Those are bomb, dude. Oh, yeah. It's like ice cream. Yeah, it's great. So we're good on that. Uh. But yeah, everything spiritually, and that's that's just my main focus now, everything that has to do with eternity and the kingdom, getting souls saved. Uh, and now that I went through this life in my past, I'm not scared of nothing. And I'm especially not scared because I have the Lord. And so evangeling, evangeling, evangelistic moments, if there is one, I'm taking it. And I'll take it almost every time. Just because I know that that can literally, it will change someone's life for the best. Uh, and it's so amazing to see it work in my life to bring someone to Christ or like like Grayson did for me. To do that for other people is where my purpose is. And that's the greatest feeling, the greatest achievement. Well, even just one person. That's where I'm at today is kingdom-minded. Um, I do have a career going on. I am still with my cousin. I still have other dreams, but nothing matters without the Lord as wow. my, the forefront. And that's just that's just what my focus is. And I just love people, love to talk to people. I feel like uh, I have a word from God, and it's ambassador. I'm an ambassador for Christ, um, and I haven't even scratched the surface. So I have a legacy. What what would those grandparents that taught you about Jesus when you were a little boy say about man about you now? Man, this is a good story I can bring up real quick. Is my grandma when she was about two weeks from passing away, and this was in, when I was in my dark times. I went up to her just to visit, and I said, "Hey, I don't believe in Jesus, Grandma." And instantly she goes, "Yes, you do, honey." And I was like, I kind of just I paused and I was like, "Oh, okay." And it's just crazy to think because. The foundation of where you are, or as a kid, the foundation is everything. So my grandma sharing Christ at a young age is a big reason why I accepted Christ in the first place. Is because I loved her so much that I had to respect her love to even seek it out. So they would be so proud, man. They'd be, they'd be in tears. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and not only that, they would be in tears because Graham, or Grayson and I... Wasn't their favorites? Like, they loved everybody, but I'm low-key going to say we were the favorites. <laughs> and the fact that we're together, working on a level where we are now, I'm just so blessed. And, like, thinking about my grandparents can really uh, bring out a cry in me, 100%. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Great yeah. story, man. Yeah. Hey, and you know, I do want to have a couple things to say. One is uh, if there's anyone in your life who is – not getting down because you are a Christian or you are trying to follow the faith. So such as my brother, I have a half brother. He doesn't speak to me no more because I'm Christian and I rep it the way I do. You got to be proud of that. I know it hurts. Um, It's not like something you should wish for, but you're going to be blessed and the Lord's honored. He's going to honor that a thousand percent. Amen. Um, It's just something that's been on my heart. So I wanted to say it. Hopefully my brother can see this. That's awesome. Yeah. For sure. Right on, man. You know, we got one more thing. Oh, what's up? I let you go. Let's see it. <laughs> so this is what we call the Furious Five. Oh, am I about to... Yeah. Am I about to drop bars? 
No, no, look at oh, this guy. Okay. Oh, you got bars? <laughs> no. I can put on another beat, man. If you, I got some. I got some. Let me see. I got. Well, that's not the beat I want. You got. I got some. You got some bars or what? Man, this is too East Coast. I don't know. I don't know what that is. All right, so, so, yo, you want some Snoop or what? no? I'm just kidding. Hey. No, don't tempt me. The Furious tempt me. Five is what little thing me and Cam do, and it's five furious questions that you answer. Mm. All right, so uh, furious. Let's go. I'm furious. That's that's for sure. Question number one on the Street Gospel Furious Five with Zach. Your biggest regret in life? Wow, biggest regret in life. My biggest regret in life is not. You know, it's funny. I don't have any. I almost don't have any regrets. Nice. I could say something, but there's nothing that makes me feel like I regret it. All right. Yeah, no. Nah. Question number two on the Furious Five. Tacos or cheeseburgers? Oh, cheeseburgers. Oh, cheeseburgers. Oh, I should have known. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that cheese. <laughs> that cheese. I mean, what, what's cheese, though? Oh, it doesn't even matter. I could go get a McDonald's cheeseburger right now and, <laughs> and be super happy. Dang man, you know what? I, I, I don't know. I'm looking at you different now. It's not pro fit. No, so I'm on a different wave. But yeah, we'll <laughs> talk about it some wave. other day. All right. Um, question number three on the Furious Five here, Street Gospel. If you could meet one person, dead or alive, any time period in Jesus, you would meet Jesus. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. What would you tell him? That I love him. That's it. Uh, no, I, I mean I got a lot of stuff to say, you know, and I do, I do, but. Uh, yeah, I, that I love him. That uh, I hope I did what you called me to do. Nice. I don't want to be that guy who goes up to heaven and uh, gets turned away. Right on. Yeah, or just not live out that call. Uh, so, something tells me you're going to meet him one day. Oh, yeah. Okay. 100%. Oh, and we're, we're going to be homies, too. <laughs> Question number four. Long-term goal that you got. Long-term goal. Yeah. There's a lot of things happening in this past just even two weeks that things are changing so you know i I would love to get into acting even more so i have some things on my instagram but i would like to dive in more um but man kingdom minded is how i am so i don't know be an evangelist be a pastor we'll see i I really don't know where it's going but it's going to be in kingdom in the kingdom right on man yeah i could see you doing the acting thing bro you know what i mean i'm gonna see why you say that I just I can see like you you can play a lot of different roles. Okay, yeah, you know what sure. I mean. You've been there, done that. Yeah, you can. You, you, you were in the army. You not know, act like that. You in the streets, drugs, Christian, Hooper. I mean, these are a lot of different things, like a lot of different avenues that you can pick and choose from. To, That's to the thing, though, right? Put yourself in that mode. Some yeah. people don't know what it's like to be a Hooper. So yeah, I get you. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks, Definitely. appreciate yeah. that. Definitely. So we talked about your style early on, right? Uh, Okay. So I got a great question. Question number five. Last one, the Furious Five. If you had to wear one brand for the rest of your life, which brand would it be? Nike. You would just wear Nike. Ha- yeah, Nike. You know Nike's the go. Everyone who's watching this, you can't deny Nike's the go. Just Nike. All Even day. Supreme. I love Supreme and all, but Nike. You could just you could dress any way. You don't have to be rowdy and still look good, or you can be rowdy and still look good. So we're going with Nike. Okay, uh, Nike. Is that a common answer? Uh, you know, I never asked nobody that question. Okay, I, I think I asked Grayson uh, if he had to rock one shoe for the rest of his life, which one would it be? He didn't really give me an answer. Oh, he a, answered. I, it was kind of like a mix answer. He, he he like blended two different shoes together, and I was like, no, it has to be one shoe, <laughs> one on one left, like, yeah, one, another one I'll, on the right. He was like, I would take the Kobe, and then I would take the <laughs> something else, and I'd put them together. I was like, Look, no, that's a sneakerhead. Yeah, that's a sneakerhead. I was like, I just wanted a, a clean answer. Like I would rock the Jordan fours, you know, all day. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I, you guys know Shea Cotton. So Shea Cotton came here, Hooper. Okay. Uh, and then I think he said right off the bat, he was like, fives. Fives go with everything. Like, fives go with the street look. Fives go with suits. He's not <laughs> wrong. Yeah. Yeah. He's I, not wrong. I was like, you're right on that Especially one. Especially today. Jordans are go with dress shoes like these days, you know? Right. Uh. Right on, man. Hey, why? Well, I appreciate you coming out, man. Thanks Definitely. so much for having me. Definitely was a good time. Like I mentioned, man, like, thank you for this opportunity for this platform. This is like, this is probably where I'm going in my purpose. Uh, I want to get better at speaking. I want to get better at motivational speaking. I just want to impact the world, man. 
Right on, man. So I appreciate you for letting me have this moment. I appreciate you coming out, man. Uh, definitely a uh, great way to start the year, yeah. start this new uh, uh, 2022. Uh, man, appreciate you, man. Hey, drop that beat, Willow. Uh, <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> next playing. time I'll get next you time, out. Next time we're going to have to do it. Right? Word. So that'll conclude this episode of the Street Gospel Podcast. Be sure to check us out. Tell your friends about us. Um uh, Subscribe on YouTube Go like our Instagram Street Gospel Podcast Make sure you tell everybody about it We appreciate you guys out there uh, Stay up We love you Stay Peace. up